Hello, everybody, and welcome to tonight's webinar. I am so thrilled that you could join us here today. My name is Sam Anderson. I'm a regional trainer at C2 Education. I've been working in the field with C2 for over 10 years, but, uh, between working as a teacher, as well as working to sort of train uh, teachers, as well as act as an academic coach for a lot of our centers, uh, particularly I'm focused in uh, the Northeast. But I, you know, I, I, I remember growing up, um, you know, doing a lot of these summer programs. And that's really what we're gonna talk about tonight. You know, how to sort of apply to selective summer programs, right? The OSU actually, you know, you, you have to apply to, maybe there's an application, a, a you know, selective, a selection process. Um, I remember, you know, and, and, and summer programs as a whole, I know for me, you know, started really young. My parents always wanted me to do something every summer, right? It was never, it was never, it was never okay to just sit back, chill on a beach and relax as much as I may have somehow wanted to. But, you know, summer programs exist for all ages in all different areas in all different ways. But, you know, there's a lot of them. And so we want to sort of spend some time talking today about a couple of things, right? We want to talk a bit about, you know, just general sort of an overview of summer programs. But we also want to look at, you know, what types there are. Again, there are tons of summer programs. They, they sort of really fall into three categories that we're going to go through tonight. Um, <clears throat> And sort of like what the use is, what they each are, some examples. And then we're going to spend some time really sort of talking about applying to summer programs. Because, you know, like colleges over the last several years, summer programs have become more and more selective. Um, you know, there are, there are a lot of them, but, you know, there are also a lot more people applying to them. And so really sort of the whole process of how to go through and apply to these summer programs. So. To first start with, what are some what are summer programs, right? Summer programs, um, depending on you know who you're talking to, where you're applying to. Sometimes they're just called summer camps, summer programs. Sometimes they're called summer immersion programs. Um, usually, you know, a, good, a summer program can run anywhere for usually about three to eight weeks. Sometimes, you know, there'll be you know specifically some like class-based ones might be one or two weeks, but usually they're going to run between three to eight weeks. They can vary in terms of cost, right? Always the financial, right? It's not enough that you have to pay to go to college or pay to go to a private school or whatever it is. Sometimes you have to pay to go to these summer programs. Now, they can vary. Some of them are completely free, right? Some of them is just you, you sign up, you apply, you know, again, sometimes very rigorous, very selective because they are free. But other ones can cost, you know, substantial amounts of money, you know, thousands of dollars, you know, and can be quite, you know, <clears throat> selective as well in that area. Um, but regardless, there are all types of programs for all types of children, all types of interest, and for all ages. Again, I remember I started doing summer programs when I was very young in middle school, very early in middle school. I, I think um, my first summer program occurred when I was in like fifth or sixth grade. Um, and, you know, of those summer programs, you know, they are hosted in all sorts of locations. Many are hosted on college campuses. Some of them require you to live on the campus. Um, some of them, depending on obviously the distance, are more commuter based. Um, they just are either classes or programs at a school, but there is no guaranteed housing for that program. And so there are tons of programs across the board. But they are also all run by completely different people. Um, some of them, usually ones, and not all the ones held on colleges are run by the college. Sometimes they are run by people who are affiliated with the college. It is not, you know, quite a clear, oh, if it's going to be held on this particular, you know, campus, it is run by that particular co college. For instance, I know that, in fact, the CTY, right? John Hopkins Center for Talented Youth, which is a very well-known program. I know I did it. I think I did my, I, I did it in, in, in sixth or seventh grade. Um, and then I also did it again in high school. Um, but I actually, when I did it in high school, I did it on a college that was not John Hopkins. Um, so like, for instance, CTY does sort of work with you know, many other colleges. So even if you're on a particular campus, it may be a program that is run by that particular college or by a separate college or by a separate organization altogether, right? Some are run by companies, some are run by just organizations in general, um, nonprofits, for-profits, 
others are run by governments, um, state, local, federal governments um, that, you know, can will host sponsor a program, um, you know, that can, you know, especially, you know, sometimes there'll be ones in your particular locality, in your particular state. Um, that you can then apply to as well. So there are lots of programs, all sorts of people for all sorts of you know different groups affiliated with that you can apply to. But the big question is, okay, there's tons and tons of programs, Sam. I get that. I get there's lots of programs. Why should I do this? You know, again, I want to go home. Look, I just went to school for for nine nine or or possibly ten months. Last thing I want to do is to go back and do this like crazy summer program. Why should I do this? Now, I, I got this a lot when I was teaching. I, I, I had a lot of students that were sort of just like, really, I have to go, I, I should do more classes or I should do this. And the answer is, yeah, you really should because there's a lot of great reasons, right? One, again, you've probably heard so much about this. Parents, you've heard this a lot, brain drain. It's real. Brain drain is a real thing. It is, at, you know, there are, numerous studies that show that students lose math and reading skills over the course of the summer and that therefore they start the school year behind the eight ball. So attending a summer program, especially an academic one, and again, we are going to talk about different types of programs, can really help fight that off. But another great way of doing it is also a great way to experience new things, right? Experience what it's like living on a college campus, you know, get a sense. Hmm, do I like this? Do I like being in a dorm? Do I like, you know, what the, the cafeteria is like? Do I like, you know, you know, this particular college? Do I like, you know, a lecture hall? Do I like specifically things in college that I'm not used to in high school, right? Um, you know, besides just living away from home. But, you know, it's also a great way. It's a great way, you know, you're going to meet people, you're going to meet new people, you meet friends. I, you know, I know that there are still some people from some of the programs I attended that I, I've kept in contact with um, over the years, um, you know, and not just on places like Facebook or, you know, you know, where it's just sort of a, a cursory interaction, but like actually, yeah, we'll occasionally text or, you know, they'll be like, hey, you know, hey, Sam, I'm going to be in the area where you're living around. You know, you want to meet up for lunch or coffee or something like that. You know, you can sometimes meet friends that you'll sort of, you know, even if they're from different locations, even if they're from very far away, you can still form strong, lasting relationships with those. Um, you know, and if not, you know, again, especially if you're looking at some specific types of programs that we are going to be talking about, you can use these as a chance to sort of really expand, pursue your passions. You know, if you're really big into music or into sports or into, you know, a particular field, you could really focus on doing that. Or, of course, you can also, you know, learn. And, and while learning because of its, you know, because it's not in school, because there are no grades and no, you know, <clears throat> nothing is really riding on it, a lot of times it's a way to learn and have a lot more fun while doing it, right? It's, yeah, you might be taking classes, you might be attending a program that is academic or, you know, even non-academic, but still sort of, you know, involving classes or, or specific activities or set schedules, but you get to have fun while doing it. And so there are a lot of great reasons to attend the summer program, you know, besides just, you know, to keep yourself busy, um, which don't get me wrong. It's sometimes a really important reason to attend a summer program, right? It is good to, to be active, to not be a couch potato. That's always another reason why to do these. But because of that, because there are a lot of great reasons to do it, let's take a look at what types of programs there are. And we're really going to break this down to sort of three different groups of programs. One, pre-college programs. You know, pre-college programs, these are probably the biggest group. Um, <clears throat> these are the ones where if you look up summer programs, it's usually the first bunch of hits on the summer. When you look up summer programs or summer courses or summer things, this is what you're going to find. They are usually academics focused. Um, they're sometimes focused in a single course or they allow you to take like multiple courses at a particular college, um, depending on what the pre-college program is. You know, I know, again, you know, CTY is a classic example of this, um, that, you know, CTY, you, you take a single course over the course of a couple of weeks, but there are other ones that do, you know, allow you to take more than one particularly classes. Now, that being said, 
there are many that don't only have you taking classes. They have you taking classes, but they also have you doing other things. There are field trips. There are, you know, especially if you're looking at a, at, at a particular pre-college program that might be located in a particular, you know, either a metropol metropolitan area um, or in a, a particular location, right? Like, you know, for instance, like if you're, if you're in a pre-college program at like NYU, you might have things where there are field trips to various locations around and in New York, right? Because it is New York. Or if you're in Chicago or in LA, right? You might have things that aren't are beyond that. Or you know, if you're in a more particular area, there might be bonding activities or group activities with people not only in your class but in other classes as well, right? To sort of offer that, you know. And you know, again, since many of them, almost all of them, are on college campuses. That's a great way to sort of experience life as a college student, especially if you are in one that does require you to live on campus, right? Like, you know, you know, I, I did a program, I did a program at Northwestern uh, during high school, right? I was forced to live on campus in Northwestern for weeks. And I really liked it. And I really liked Northwestern and being in Northwestern. And so I, I, I did apply there. Um, and, and so it could really sort of help figure out like, oh, I really like this school. You know, let me let me try applying here. And, you know, on top of that, some programs, when you take these programs, can give you transferable credits either to your high school, which actually happened to me. I, I did take a, a CTY program when I was in high school, and I was able to use that course to sort of, my, my school was willing to take that course and apply it so I didn't have to take, I took a chemistry course when I was, I was in, in, in a sophomore year and allowed me to place out of chemistry um in my high school so i i got to not have to take it um and i was able to take an ap a little bit earlier on um but if not some of them also offer credits that you can use for college right they offer college level credits either in that schools or in other schools that will take that and, and you would need to sort of find that out and so there are a lot of great things about these pre-college programs besides again just finding that brain drain you know making new friends all the things that we just talked about in the last couple and in, in, in the previous slide now again this is a very very prevalent group of programs there are tons of them out there we just sort of lay labeled a couple examples here just for you you know, to use there, but there are many of them, right? You know, besides uh, Summer of Brown, Harvard, U Chicago, again, John Hopkins, CTY, very prevalent for all ages across the board. You know, there's Duke Talent Identification Program or the Duke Tips Program, which is again another one that goes across multiple grades. And again, you know, GW, you know, almost every Ivy League school, almost most major, you know, top 50 schools have some form of pre college program that you can join. But a lot of these schools, even a lot of colleges offer additional ones. They offer programs that are not necessarily so academically based, but are also other styles. But one of the big questions I've always gotten, especially when you have a student that is really, really interested in a particular school, is will this help me get into college? Will this help me get into often more particularly, right? Will this help me get into the school I really want to go? If I want to go to Harvard, is going to the Harvard summer program really going to help me? And the answer is yes and no. <clears throat> so attending a college program in general shows that you have particular interests and passions. And again, that you are trying in an effort and, you know, not wasting your summers around, right? Again, it sort of, sort of firms up that resume that you then present to college. However, it's not going to make or break it. It's not going to sort of be like, oh, well, they have a bad GPA, they have bad test scores, but they did this summer program, so we're going to accept them. No. Again, your GPA, your academics, your performance in school, your standardized tests, those are the most important. And even when it comes to your, your passions and interest and dedication to particular fields, there are other ways of showing it. And to answer that question, because Again, it was a very common one. If I want to get into school X, take, does taking their summer program help? The answer is no. Admissions chances to any particular school are not affected by attending a program affiliated with that particular college. Me doing the Northwestern program did not help me get into Northwestern. Um, <clears throat> 
me doing the Northwestern program did show Northwestern that I was interested in, you know, the field that I took, right? When I, you know, the, the areas, the courses that I took during that program, it did demonstrate that I was interested in them. It also demonstrated that I was not just sort of sitting by on my, you know, on my behind for all of the summer, right? It did sort of show that, hey, I'm driven, I'm trying, I'm always trying to do things, I'm always trying to improve myself. And that is what a pre-college program will help show colleges. Not necessarily, oh, they took the Harvard summer program, we're gonna accept them into Harvard. It does not work like that. Now, that being said, right? Pre-college academic-based programs are not necessarily for everyone, right? They're not necessarily, you know, they weren't always for me, right? I, again, I did lots of, lots of, uh, of summer activities, summer programs throughout many, many years. Not all of them are academic-based, and that's fine. And so sometimes you're gonna be looking at pro programs with a targeted focus or programs that are gonna target your passions and your interests, right? Now, that passion and interest, it can be academic, right? It can be doing the Northwestern program on journalism. It can be doing something in robotics or doing something in you know, engineering or something in theater or art or music or sport. It can be any of those. Whether it's academic or extracurricular, there are many programs that focus on particular fields of interest. Now, these programs are often, again, on a school, will often sometimes involve taking classes, again, especially if you're looking at a more academic focused field of interest, like let's say robotics, but a lot of them also involve hands-on engagement, right? Practices, recitals, you know, skirmishes, games, or, you know, you know, research projects, working at a site, working in a lab, you know, working in a theater, working behind stage at a concert, all different ways that programs like this take you beyond the classroom, right? Take you, yes, there might be classes in particular areas, right? Every single extracurricular focus, you know, whether it being music, art, sports, has theory and academic areas behind it, um, things that you can learn, so to speak. But there are also other things that these programs bring in and, and use that sort of really expand them beyond just the academic area, right? And so if you are in a particular interest, in a particular field, you really, really love something, these can be a great way to sort of expand that and again, show colleges or show high schools if you're in middle school looking to enter a particular high school that has a particular focus in that area, right? Let's say you're a middle schooler who wants to get into a math and science high school, taking a summer course or a summer program that has a strong focus in particular math or science field that you're interested in is a great way to show that high school that, hey, you can do that. I really want to do this. Please accept me. But again, lots of these programs across the board. Here's again just some examples, right? They're being used research in science engineering, Berkeley College of Music, right? Their five week music intensive program, again, for things that are not so, you know, academic based. Summer internship, biomedical research, MIT's Girls Who Code for Coding, right? Or again, Princeton Summer Journalism, right? Again, things that are not so academic. There are obviously also sports programs, music programs. Uh, art programs, theater programs, you name it, there is probably a program at a college that, or at a, a school or community college or anything that you can take, all right? And again, those sort of programs are targeted. Again, they're highly selective. You do need to apply. You do need to get in. You know, there are a great number of some of these summer programs, but there are, again, really great things, especially if you have that particular interest that you want to expand and explore over the summer, right? you're really into a particular sport, music, art, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what the interest is, always find a way to expand it. Now, the last sort of group is the leadership or community outreach focus programs. <clears throat> and these are sort of really a really unique niche style of program. Um, because they, in a sense, sort of cover two different groups, right? There's your sort of leadership slash community outreach. And Sometimes they merge, sometimes they're somewhat separate, uh, but they're often interdisciplinary. They are, you know, leadership skills or leadership issues, character building, community outreach, or they are programs that take that leadership idea and use it to focus on global issues, global concerns. Um, and so, you know, depending on what program it is, there could be all sorts of things. You could take be taking classes, again, especially if you have that sort of focus on global concern issues or even leadership skills, or it could be activities. It could be community outreach. It could be volunteering. It could be, you know, 
activities in a particular maybe low income field or, or in a, you know or in the community around the, the college or campus or wherever it is that you are it could also be a mix it could be like oh we're going to focus on this global issue then we're going to go someplace that's dealing with that issue right now some of them are focused on specific disciplines again you know sometimes it focuses on a global issue let's say it's global warming or it's world hunger or it's cancer or it's age right these are global issues and and you know they might be focused on one particular issue or particular discipline like okay we're going to deal with you know um you know the you know political science and, and and all the political issues there some of them are more general right again they're just sort of like hey leadership in general or community service in general but regardless of which type of program it is they're all great ones they're all great things to show up on your resume not necessarily better or worse than any of the others but again they're more interdisciplinary they often do have community outreach or again character building leadership there are again lots of these across the countries um, but they are again a little bit more specific a little bit more niche sometimes more selective because of that now again if this is something that appeals to you here is some examples again these are not quite as common as the other two the other two there's tons of across the board here a little bit more common you have things like the notre dame leadership seminars brown's leadership institute princeton summer camp at the wells leadership academy um i actually had a student who did this um and it was it was great for her uh west point summer leaders experience this is obviously right based on the military i'm pretty sure i think the other branches also have one as well but right you know if, again you want something that's a little bit more focused something like the student conservation association their national crews but again there are all sorts of different sort of focused leadership or community outreach that you can apply to if you don't know a, if you don't know, or if you, for any of these ones that we have talked about here tonight, if you want more information, if you want to sort of, you know, look up for other examples, there are tons and tons of websites, blogs, et cetera, that can give you that information um, that you can sort of look down to find and sort of be like, oh yeah, this looks interesting. I can try this out, right? <clears throat> so Google search, take a look, or, you know, talk to local, you know, again, since a lot of these are run by state, local, talk to your high school, talk to your guidance counselor, talk to all sorts of people to sort of find out any ones that they recommend. Talk to friends and family. See if there's any summer programs that they or people that they know have tried and that they have really gotten out of. If not, again, take a look at these options. There are tons more out there. But now let's talk a bit more about how to actually go about applying for these, right? We've talked about all sorts of programs. We've talked about why to do them. We talked about types of programs maybe one of these interests you maybe one of these sort of rang a bell and you're like hey this really sounds good i really want to try to apply to this one let's talk about how to actually do that and really it's they're selective and because they're selective that means that there is an application process behind this and there are a lot of commonalities between them now each program may have specific application requirements depending on the style of program, right? A pre-college might be different than a extracurricular or you know a targeted focus one, which might be different than a leadership one. Um, but usually, there are very common. One of them, they almost always want your grades. They always want your school and grades. They always want to know how you're performing academically. Other ones, and many of these may want scores from standardized tests. They may want the SAT, the ACT, the PSAT, the pre-SAT, you know, SSAT, ISAE. Um, some like CTY may have a, a test that's specific for that, right? The S SCAT. Um, <clears throat> there are, you know, some other ones may have their own test that they, they make up. But, you know, a lot of them do use the SAT, the PSAT, the PSAT, PSAT 8.9, ACT, pre-ACT. Um, <clears throat> So, because there is a test that you need to take for these applications, you need to be aware of when those testing deadlines are, right? If you are applying to school and the deadline for that school is, let's say, February 15th, right? You need to know that, let's say they want a, an SAT. You need to know that you can't take an SAT in March if the deadline is February 15th. Right? You have to take it before then. You have to take the December or the November or the October or the August. You have to take an earlier one. right? Same goes for the ACT, right? If it's February 15th, yeah, you might be able to take that February, but that might be cutting it a bit close, especially if you want to maybe try a couple times to get a good scores that you can send them. So you might want to take it earlier. So be aware of what those testing deadlines are. And it is important to know some 
programs might have different testing deadlines than their application deadline. Okay, some of them might be very clearly say we want we accept tests from this date or before. All right. So keep in mind again going to that February fifteenth, you might not be able to take that February ACT. They might want something from earlier. So you have to know not just what the deadlines for the applications are, but also when those testing deadlines are. Now, another very common one, especially in these selective ones, is often a writing sample or an application essay. Some schools want you to send them uh, an essay you did for school. Some of them want you to write the, them an essay for, you know, an essay for them. Either one, acceptable. Um, either one, you want to make sure that you really try hard, that you don't just sort of wing it. Right, that you're really giving it your all, right? If they're asking for something, and this is a general rule for anything with an application, if they want something, they're going to take it seriously. So if you have a writing sample or an application essay, make sure you take it seriously. Don't send them a, an essay from school that you didn't do well on, right? Or if you know that you're going to be applying for a program like this, make sure you do good on your in-school essays during the year you're applying to. Right, works both ways. Get some extra help, spend extra time. Don't do it the night before. Things like that. Right. Or again, spend some time on the application. Don't write your application essay two days before the deadline. Give it some time, pay some attention to it. Lastly, one of the very common things is recommendation letters. These are typically from school teachers. Ask your school teachers for these as early as possible if the programs you're looking at requires that. Earlier the better. You're going to get more time, more effort into that letter of recommendation, you're, it's probably going to be a better of recommend, letter of recommendation, more thoughtful and more specific to you. So again, ask early. Now, depending on the program though, especially for some of those more specific programs or for ones that have, you know, ones for like a passion or interest, again, like arts, you know, music, theater, et cetera, or even just ones that are run by state and local governments. Um, you might have additional requirements, right? Again, ones that are run by state and local governments might want proof of residency. Or if it is a program for, let's say, based, you know, a, a, you know maybe it's a free program, but that free, you know, it's free because it's for lower income, they might want something for family income requirements. Um, or the other way around, they might want family income requirements because it is an expensive summer program. And they want to make sure that, you know, they're not putting you into debt. Um, some of them, again, looking at those like more specific interests might require a video or an art portfolio or an addition or just an interview, right? They might want you to come on down and have an interview or it might be via phone or it might be, you know, via Skype or, you know, web chat or Google Hangouts or something along those lines, but they may ask for an interview. Um, and if they do ask for an interview, again, spend some time thinking about it. Don't just sort of wing it. Um, also, if you're having an interview, especially if you have a phone or a, a Google chat interview, don't be doing something else during the interview, right? Give it your undivided 100% attention. Um, again, they're not going to ask for something they are not going to consider in the application. So it is a rigorous selective application process. There are multiple steps, multiple requirements. But really, when it comes down to it, we're going to sort of focus on really, there's only really four steps in this, right? There's a lot of things you need to put together for, but there's really only four steps that you need to take. One, what programs are you applying to, right? Create a list, put together a list of programs, know when you need to apply, gather your application materials, and then, of course, apply. Now, one, obviously, Applying requires you to actually think through, right? You just don't just apply to, you know, programs willy-nilly. A lot of them do have application fees, but you really want to think about really a bunch of questions, right? One, what do you want to get out of the summer program, right? Is there a passion you want to learn about or expand? Is there, you know, which one of the three types of programs? Do you want something close by so you can still live at home? Or maybe you know see your friends from school over the time period or do you want to live on campus do you want to be in a, a different state and very important how long of a program are you comfortable with right a week two weeks half the summer the entire summer right i i know that like as i got older the length of time that i was comfortable with doing a summer program grew and grew and grew i started out i i didn't really want to do anything longer than three weeks right anything longer than three weeks i was just sort of like i wanted to be home i got a little homesick 
by the time I was in that, you know, junior, senior year, I was okay with like seven, six, seven weeks. That's not a problem. Right? So know how long you're comfortable with, right? Have you, how long have you spent away from home for long periods of time? Are you happy with that? Again, if, especially if you're going to be living on campus, if you're going to be commuting, like how long do you want to do that commuting? How comfortable are your parents with driving you back and forth to this program for how long, right? Know that information. You know, if you want to do multiple summer programs in a single summer, and I knew lots of students that did that, you have to make sure that, you know, okay, I, I, this program can't be any longer than this, so I can do this one, right? Know the length of times that you're looking for. When you create your list of programs, keep these questions in mind. These really four questions are, what do you want to do it for? What type of program is it? Where do you want to be? And how long do you want to be there? Right? Really think about those four things and put together your list. Again, you can have a list that's two programs. You can have a list that's 10 programs. L length of it doesn't matter. Just keep in mind that you're going to probably apply to most of the things on this list. Now, once you have your list, know when you're going to apply. Right? Pay attention to your application window and to deadlines. Summer programs have a start window and an end window. Sometimes they're like, yep, we start accepting applications, you know, January 15th and we're done March 15th, right? So that means you can't apply before January 15th and you can't apply after March 15th, right? Now, a lot of them that January to March is a very common window. However, there are other schools that have longer windows, shorter windows, different months are usually around two months depending on the program again pay attention to that last accepted test date it can affect the deadlines you can make right if it is you know the end of january or the middle of february and the last accepted date was the december sat you can't apply to those anymore if you haven't taken that test um however though right if it's you know the middle of february and you're the last ex the deadlines in April, the last accepted date is March, you still have time to take it. So pay attention. Some, you know, do sort of have a rolling admissions first come, first serve. Um, a lot of them, when they have that, what they have is they have multiple deadlines. And it's sort of like, you know, for instance, uh, CTY is a common uh, an example of this one where they have multiple deadlines for their application. But they, it's, you know, okay, so people who apply for the first deadline, they get all their choices first. People who apply for the second one, they get spots on whatever's left. The third deadline, they, you know, it's, it's basically every later deadline, the smaller the options you have are. Um, this is especially true in, you know, you know, very sort of class-based ones um, where they just fill up the slots as people apply. But know your application windows, know the deadlines, you know, know whether the deadline is, is March, February, January, April, May, June, or, you know, whether there are more than one and what you're eligible for, what you can make, right? So, right, you have your list of programs, make sure you write the deadline next to all of those, right? Step three is, is pretty simple, right? Start getting everything together, right? Once you know your deadlines, right, that's when you start putting this together, once you have them. Now, again, just because you can't apply before, say, January 15th or February 15th or whatever that deadline window opens, that application window opens, that doesn't mean you can't start putting things together. Again, ask your recognitions as early as possible. Figure out which standardized test you're going to take and start preparing for it if need be. <clears throat> All right? Start outlining, planning your essay. A lot of times, even though the deadlines um not until you know the application window doesn't open, they still have the essay topic available for you to look. Get together any other, right? If there is a portfolio or an audition or an interview needed, schedule it as early as possible. Um, um, you know, schedule it out, you know, so that you know when it is on that calendar as soon as you can. And really sort of spend your time putting this together. Don't wait. Do not wait until the very end when it comes to getting your application materials together. That is really just not a good plan, really for anything, for any kind of applicant. Anything you have to apply to, just don't wait till the end. Always try to sort of really get your stuff together at least a month or more. More is better. Longer is the more time you have to prepare for this stuff, the better it's going to be. So spend as much time as you possibly can getting your application together. So start as early as possible. Because your last step is really to apply. Once you get everything together, once you, you sort of know what your deadlines are, it's time to hit that submit button, right? A lot of them, they're online applications. Apply as soon as possible. Again, a lot of things do have that first come, first serve. Um, 
right? First choice, apply early as you can those class base. Again, if they have those multiple deadlines, apply to the earliest possible deadline you can. Um, whether it's rolling in missions, whether it's multiple deadlines, the earlier you apply, the sooner you're going to know as well, right? If you apply to an earlier deadline, you'll find out earlier. If it's true rolling admissions, a lot of them are. A lot of them, even if they have that application, they are sort of rolling admissions. Um, the sooner you apply, the sooner you'll find out, and then the sooner you can plan alternatives. Because, right, sometimes things get away from us, right? Sometimes we lose track of things. And sometimes you miss your deadline. Sometimes you miss your deadline for the, your first choice. Or you get, you get knocked out of your first choice, right? Maybe your deadline already passed. Or maybe you already heard back from your summer program and you find that you didn't get into it, right? Just because you miss it does not mean you should just, again, chill at home watching Netflix. Or, you know, sit on a beach. There's a lot of other things you can apply. Again, things like, you know, and we've just listed a couple here. There are many more that have late deadlines. We, in fact, have a blog. Um, if you go to our website, there is a, a blog entry that lists 15 programs that still are accepting applications. Uh, Summer of Brown, again, Columbia Pre-College, USC, Savannah. Again, if you're a little bit more sort of, you know, arts-based, you know, there are, you know, those in particular you know, art programs, music programs, theater programs, you know, community service, those leadership programs, they do have application deadlines that go on sometimes until late April, early May, sometimes early June. Now, let's say you either had your heart set on an application or you missed every single deadline there possibly was, right? You waited until the end of May and every program you wanted to do is still there. There are still lots of other options you can play. So let's say you've missed everything. Summer programs are not an option anymore. There are still other things that you can do, right? You can always get a job. You can intern. You can volunteer, right? Always three great things to do that to sort of build up your summer. Again, sort of show schools, whether it be a high school or a college that, hey, I didn't just sit around. I, I did stuff. I got in there, right? It builds up that resume, right? Holding a job shows that somebody trusts you, you know, and for a lot of, you know, a lot of high schoolers, you know, ask us about really a lot of these things. But having a job in a particular field you're interested in is not a must. Skills are gained regardless of what you go into. I know for me, I I spent a summer doing a job in in the maintenance department for a a local community center. You know, and and it did. It built up skills. It built up endurance. It built up you know the ability to work long hours. The ability to you know. You know, and not to mention just some really, really practical skills that, like, you know, I learned and, and that have helped me in, in, in many, many jobs being in office buildings and stuff that, like, oh, yeah, I know how to do this, you know, in terms of, like, you know, just, just basic stuff. So it doesn't necessarily have to be in a field you're particularly interested in or, or plan to go into. There are skills to be gained no matter what you do. Internships are the same way, right? Great way to get a field for a particular field of interest. Um, it's a great thing. Again, there are skills you can gain across the board. Many are unpaid depending on the laws. But, you know, money is not a reason to do or, or not to do an internship. You know, gain skills, gain experience, gain exposure, gain connections. A lot of great things you can do. And, of course, you know, if not, you can always volunteer, right? Many opportunities, formal, informal. You know, I know for a couple summers I used to volunteer on my friend's farm. Um, right. It wasn't a formal thing. I didn't have to apply. It was an organization, but I, I, I volunteered to help, you know, a friend of mine from high school, his, his dad ran a farm. Um, and it was, it was something to do. And it was interesting. You learned a lot. Um, and it was, you know, it was a community run farm. So it was technically volunteering, um, you know, but helping a suit kitchen, volunteering libraries, volunteering at, at organizations and programs, lots of non nonprofits, picking up garbage on the side of the road. There are lots of ways to make a difference in the community, lots of things that you can do just to, you know, again, put something else on your on your resume, show colleges or, or high schools that, you know, you were productive during the summer. Um, now, when it comes to finding this, right, again, you want to start looking immediately, right? The sooner the offer. So it's not like, oh, I want to mean, right, again, you've maybe missed your deadlines, you maybe missed those programs that you're interested in, as soon as you miss them, as soon as that deadline passes, start looking. Um, it's not going to happen without effort, a job, an internship, et cetera. Create a resume, practice interviewing. It's possible you already might have gotten some practice for your summer programs. Look, you know, at all sorts of organizations. Look at local colleges. Look at, you know, 
go to your local, you know, town hall, community center. There might be all sorts of opportunities and options around nearby. Uh, talk to friends, talk to family, talk to your guidance counselor, um, any teachers that you know. You know, they all might have things that you can do. And again, there's always an internet search if need be. But, you know, same thing for volunteering. You know, there are lots of opportunities across the board when it comes to that. Um, for a lot of times for volunteering, again, local libraries, community centers, any nonprofits, you can just type in a Google search, nonprofits near me, or, you know, if you're ever uncertain, there are some other sites to check out. We've listed a couple here, internshipprograms.com, Idealist, Idealist Security Points of Light is a good one for, you know, volunteering and um, do something, nationalservice.gov, uh, government run thing for community service. But there are tons and tons of people. Every connection you have is a possibility that you can connect to for this. I have gotten multiple jobs, you know, during high school and, and middle school or and multiple internships and opportunities based on people I knew. Um, <clears throat> I worked for the New York State Council of the Arts because my aunt, you know, used to work there and, and knew people that she could connect me to. Um, and that was a lot of fun. I worked there during their grant giving season. It was it was interesting. I learned a lot of that, like, you know, how to write grants, how to read grants, you know, the intricacies of grant giving. A lot, which, you know, when it comes to like doing research is really, really useful to know how to do. Uh, but grants are, you know, and just knowing that process is a great thing regardless of whether you're into the arts or not. Um, and so like, you know, reach out, connect to anybody that you know or, or have run into. If you run into that, you know, cast your net wide. And again, let's say you sort of, you know, you were run down with this and you couldn't find anything. There's always the ability, you can always pursue your passions, right? Pursue every single one of them. If you're into sports, into music, into arts, do practices, do competitions, performances, um, <clears throat> you know, you know, up the amount of, you know, music lessons you do or, you know, spend, you know, say, okay, I'm going to dedicate this much of my time practicing or, you know, feel free to do a personal passion project. You know, if you're into research or if you're into medicine or something, do a research project, do a little research or something, create an app if you're into computer scientists, right? Um, <clears throat> I had a lot of friends who I had a couple of friends in high school who were big into mechanics and they spent their summer, yeah, restoring cars. Um, one thing I always tried doing over every single summer when I wasn't in the college, I always tried writing. Actually, I had a book that I have been working on actually since I was in seventh grade. I still haven't finished it, but I keep working on it. I keep going back because, you know, as I get older and I become a better and better writer, I keep looking back and going, man, I was I, I, I can write better than that now and just keep basically starting over from scratch. Um, you know, but there's other things, right? If you're into theater, you can always, you know, look for local you know, community theater groups, um, you know, and that could be something they you know, maybe you can get, you know, do an audition for a performance, or maybe you can just sort of help out, um, you know, you know, say, you know, work backstage or something like that. Or, you know, if you're again into sports, you know, maybe a bunch of, you know, reach out to some of the people who are on, you know, your sports team and see, maybe you can get together and do like a pickup game or something like that in the park or run drills or run, you know, you know, a sort of a mini practice over the summer. There are a lot of things that you can sort of get together and, and that you're interested in doing, but do something. Don't again, just sit in the butt. And again, a great one. And if you, and if, <clears throat> is to travel. You know, if you do have that time and, you know, it is a possibility for you and your family, spend some time traveling. You know, traveling does not necessarily mean go to a different country. Traveling could be something as simple as going to the next town over exploring that doing something there learning about you know maybe there's a the history in that area or something like that you know travel doesn't have to be to exotic new locales it can just be leaving the house you know exploring the town you're in one of the favorite things i used to do you know i, I used to, to just love and, and this was really a lot of times in college but i would just get up and go for a walk out and just sort of see the town around me and I still do that now. I still get up. I'll occasionally, and I've got a car now, so it's a little easier. I'll get up. I'll take a walk. I'll start walking around, or I'll drive. Um, I take a little drive and just sort of see. Oh, you know, this is really cool. Oh, I never saw this store. I want to go visit there. Something like that, right? But pursue every passion you have. Now, if at any point in time you are confused, if everything I've said is just sort of there's a lot, lot I've thrown a lot at you. I know that if you're confused on the application, if you're confused about getting those test scores that you need, and Anything along those lines, 
please feel free to reach out to us. We have lots and lots of center directors and teachers who can help. I have worked with so many students who are applying to the you know, Johns Hopkins CTY or the TIPS program or lots of other summer programs. Um, <clears throat> over the years, you know, we have lots of teachers who know that material, who know how to deal with those tests, those application tests, what the scores are, what the information needed for those particular you know, tests or applications are, what the process, what the deadlines are. Again, especially if there are local, you know, you know, we are in the locale, so, we, you know, those local programs, a lot of times, our center directors know those very well. We sometimes even sometimes, you know, have had people, you know, there are other people in the center who might have gone to a particular summer program that you're interested in interested in it can again widen that net so if anything is confusing or if you just have additional questions or if you want to meet with the center director to get an additional sort of overview of this or just to sort of look at okay how do i go about applying or to look at those test scores or interview practice or anything please at the end of this webinar there will be a survey that will pop up um, it's going to ask you uh, you know for your name your a phone number for us to reach you and your zip code please make sure to give us your zip code uh that way i when i connect you to your local c2 center i don't accidentally send you one to one across the country i really don't want to do that um i've had I, i've been doing you know so just please you know make sure you give us those three pieces of information otherwise to all of you who are applying to summer programs whatever the summer programs may be or are you know trying to figure out your summer plans i wish you all the best of luck Thank you so much for listening to me tonight, and, and I hope each and every one of you have a wonderful night.